This is Access Houston on 97.9 The Box. Good Sunday morning. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Welcoming back. She is the lady. She is the man over there at the Ensemble <laughs> Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, she runs it all. Uh, artistic director, uh, director, um, showrunner. What what else? Uh, screenwriter, no, no, writer. No, no. Uh, she's the janitor. She that, does it all. She, well, I, I mean, she collects the money. <laughs> <laughs> Eileen Morris from the Ensemble Theater. Welcome back, darling. Good oh, to hi. see you. Thank you so much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I know. Audience. Yes, yes. And um, you brought someone. New with you, yes, uh, I have, this time. Yeah, uh, KG. This is Liz Free. She's our scenic designer at the Ensemble Theater for this production. Too heavy for your pocket, but Liz has worked with us uh, over the years. She did a play last year, uh, Fetch Clay Make Man, and yeah, she's done that was some a other great one. The oh wow, you did that set. That was amazing. I loved um, the images of as it was taking us through time with the uh, the, the projection mm-hmm. of um, what happened back in the sixties. That was that was a great play. I really mm-hmm. love. I one of my favorites had. Uh, the Ensemble Theater. Well, nice to meet you. Well, oh, the pleasure is all mine. So let's talk about Too Heavy for Your Pocket. Well, first, it's a new year, 2019. Yes. So before we get into uh, the play, all of the great things that are happening at the Ensemble, what's, uh, what's the run for this season? What's the run for this season? Because I know that you all have a, you have a plethora of uh, productions that uh, – that goes on throughout the year. Oh, so the rest of the run. Okay. Yes. So we've completed three plays this year of our six-play subscription season. Too Heavy for Your Pocket is the third play that's running now. And then the next play coming up is a play that deals with religion and church. It's called Free to Peoples. And that will be running (laughs) mid-March until mid-April. Okay. And then we'll be doing a piece called uh, Pipeline by Dominique Moruso, Moruso. and that it deals with the uh, the from the uh, school to pipe no, jail prison uh, to uh, uh, school school to prison pipeline school to prison pipeline. Thank you yeah. very much for helping me out with that. And then we're closing out our season with a piece about Josephine Baker, and that will be our end of June to the end of July season. But amongst all of those things, kind of a layering of our creative journey pieces called celebrating the creative journey. So those are all our alternative pieces that are doing staged plays Mm -hmm. we're doing a film series we're doing original works by artists so that will be running throughout from now until the end of july as well and they can go to the website for that because like every month there's something going on yeah can you talk about just the the joy that you get or whatever emotion strikes you when you team up with other creatives and it 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 come it becomes I mean true and real and 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 you know from the ideas to to how the set is going to look to the script to you know the music and the actors like just that whole process and it, it it has to be exhilarating I'm sure it is it's like the best uh I don't want to say high yeah but it is like a high it's an emotional spiritual uh creative high that I, I can't even sometimes it's hard to put into words Katie, yeah. because you are collaborating with human beings that have that all of us come from different and yet similar shared experiences mm-hmm. we are coming together on a, a the commonality of coming together for this particular piece of art that we're creating and it feels just wonderful to be able to, to like share ideas bounce things like a ping pong game it's like uh-huh. making gumbo that's what yeah. I thought these okay. things are like okay. all of the things that mean something in life so the ping pong game is you hit you hit the ball someone hits it back you hit the ball someone hits it back sometimes you miss the ball you get it you put it back up but it's it's that you know kind of collaborative that back and uh, forth that back and mm-hmm. forth that happens in in the shared experience of the art gumbo is you put everything in the pot and you, you know, you you bake it, you cook it, you get it ready, you sim, you let it simmer. It all comes together to make this wonderful stew and roux and mm-hmm. a delicious, you know, something that you're going to all in, in, enjoy together once you break bread. And that's what we do when we make art. We, you know, between the designers and the sound designers and the hair and makeup and the costume and light and set and musicians and the stage manager and then the actors, because they're all coming together, having having a common 
commonality. Right. The commonality is the text, the script, the piece of art that you're creating. And then you all share your ideas about what it means to you. Then you have to find the common ground about how we're going to make this work. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think yeah. I mean that's what it feels like to me. Yeah. So it's 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 a beautiful thing when you see it all come together, when you see it come to fruition. Yeah, indeed. How about for you, Liz? I think we often call it a, you're making a child because it also is a really personal process. Mm-hmm. Your art kind of becomes your baby. Mm-hmm. So you sit with your idea and it you know and you have the conception of the idea and then it it does you have the you know and it takes some months for it to grow and everyone kind of adds its own bit and then. You know, and they often say the opening of the show is kind of like the birth of your child where everyone else gets to meet your artwork and enjoy <laughs> it and hopefully love it. As And it, it becomes a very personal um, yeah, experience and journey, too. That's, so we, we often call our art our baby, too. Yeah, that's a great analogy or very meta- metaphoric, yeah. I, I, I should say. Mm-hmm. You're listening to Access Houston. We are talking to Eileen Morris from the Ensemble Theater along with Liz mm-hmm. Fries. Um the play that is running now, January 24th through February the 24th, so you've gotten to uh, kind of the end of February to check out, Too Heavy for Your Pocket. Uh, give us a brief synopsis of Too Heavy for Your Pocket. Um, I th- yeah, I think, uh, why don't you go ahead and then sure. I'll add to that. Sure. Uh, Too Heavy for Your Pocket takes place um, in Nashville, Tennessee, in the summer of 1961, mm. and it's um, the story of two couples, Sally Mae Carter and Tony Carter, um, as well as Bosie and Evelyn Brandon, who are all best friends and living life um, as new couples, young couples in their 20s. And um, a turn of events, Bosie, who has just begun University at Fisk, um, decides to go on a freedom ride. Mm. And the rest of these characters' journeys are him making the sacrifice to go on a freedom ride. Um, and then as they're, as friends and supporters of Bozy, the other characters um, sacrifices as well with him leaving and how that then affects their lives. Um, and it's a very, it's just a very moving story. I've told Eileen and um, a lot of the audience members who've come, it's uh, as far as the script, the, the most powerful script I'm working on in 12 months. It's a great story. Yeah. Hmm. I, I think that um, when, when what drew me to this play initially, I think was the story itself, the language, the use of language between these, you know, it's only four people in the play, mm-hmm. but these four people and the dialogue is so very rich and very natural and very mm-hmm. honest. I mean, it's, you know, because you're dealing with young couples in relationships, so you have that kind of uh, dynamic of what sure. that is the, between the humor and the seriousness that, and the and the uh, the camaraderie that comes together. But they're dealing with a subject that is it's because it's set in the '60s, so you're dealing with subject matter that's that's very powerful, and it's kind of it's like a it's over it's a cloud that's hanging over their head, mm-hmm. where they don't want to deal with it, but they have to deal with it because they're in it, right. because mm-hmm. they're right. In you know, engaged in it. And because Bosey has made a decision to do something, as he says in the play, in one of the powerful lines in the play, where he says, I'm doing this so that my son will be able to walk the streets and be able to know that he can do that and not feel like he's jeopardizing his family or will get arrested or will be uh, penalized sure. <laughs> because, I mean, un- and unfortunately, a lot of those issues are things that we're still dealing with today. today. Come on now. I mean, so that's, the, my... that's the, the fear is that we're re- history is repeating itself mm-hmm. and we're um, these are things that we're all still saying. I want my son to be able to walk and not yeah. have to worry about getting arrested or something happening. Or his daughter, he says, taking a trip and not having to worry about being stopped or being penalized for being black, right? You know, being a person of color, and uh, and someone else feeling that I'm not, I don't have my place in this world, yeah. and that's why Bosey does the things that he does. So because of that, that story resonated, and then it was connected with the earth because the playwright says in the script, he says all of these things we want to connect with. Earth. I want, we would like, you know, green should be everywhere. And yeah. I think Liz can talk about from a scenic 
perspective what that meant but i know i'm a country girl yeah. so to me being raised in the country and those are the things that liz and i talked about i mean we you know i love being outdoors i love the earth i love when the sun is shining when it's not shining but you know you're still connected to the universe in that way right and i think that's the thing that makes us all feel so very good and the playwright has done a great job of kind of pulling that together and, and giving us that experience oh man i'm so um I am disappointed that I didn't have the opportunity to see the play before we had this conversation That's because right. just based off of that, it's like I, I wish I was I was on air during the the, the time yes, yes. Um, th that uh, Robert had invited me there, so wasn't able to see it. But geez, I'm going to go now. I mean, just this sounds like um, sounds like there's going to be a lot of parallels between then yes. and and now today because as you were describing it, I'm like, huh, sounds like 2019. To me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. You know, I, Dr. King would have been 91, 91 maybe? I was going to say. Yeah. Um, and I don't even know what he would think. People always fantasize about, you know, mm -hmm. what, what would Dr. King think of today in his dream? What would he think of, you know, Trump? What would he, you know, I... He'd probably just shake his head. But uh, but he's definitely giving us um, kind of, um, he's provided for us and given to the world an opportunity to uh, take what he, what his beliefs were mm -hmm. and use them and, and still continue to use them today. So that's, uh, and then to me, that's what art is. It's art is about, um, creating a, a place where people can um, express themselves and then other pe others can then either take it. You know, it's just like anything in life. You're going to take what you need and the rest and, and, you, you, yeah. you do what you do with it, right? Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. You listen to Access Houston, talking to the incredible people at the Ensemble Theater, uh, Miss Eileen Morris and Liz Freeze. Too Heavy for Your Pocket, running right now through February the 24th. Uh, perfect so you can go see it for black history month which you know we black history 365 around these Absolutely. parts <laughs> around these parts that's that's what we are so uh go and uh check it out liz um anything that the audience that you hope that they walk away from the play well <clears throat> once again this show is also unique in that um you're dealing with civil rights and these freedom rights but it's also from the perspective of country folk, mm -hmm. which, as Eileen said, um, you know, she's a country girl. I also grew up in a farm town in Kansas, and it's refreshing to see that it, you know, it just wasn't people of the inner city, but also people out in the country who the took rural. stands, mm -hmm. who made sacrifices. Um, and in that way, I really connected with the play. It's also great that, um, and. The playwright, um, it's not necessarily very literal in points. So uh, they asked for for trees and grass to be all throughout the theater because um, these characters are living and are, are in the 60s and are are in their, their rural country home, but they're also trying to escape into nature, trying to at least trying to be able to breathe. So there's moments for me that are very powerful where they're just um, outside of their home and they go out into their porch and they go out into the grass and they just stand there and they just... <sighs> mm. Mm. And I think sometimes you need to just breathe, mm -hmm. reconnect mm -hmm. to your base to get perspective on what you need to do for yourself or for for your family to make that mm. change mm. um and so that's very powerful in the show for me <clears throat> so go see it <laughs> too heavy for your pocket i don't even want it that we're just gonna end it right there mm. <laughs> liz freeze thank you for that that, mm -hmm. that was a word uh that was a word i haven't even seen the play but that was a word right there mm. and of course 
the lovely Eileen Morris. Always good to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you all for coming on. Thank you. Good Sunday morning. Yeah. You're listening to Access Houston. I'm your host, KG Smooth. Uh, welcoming. He is from the Ensemble Theater, the Public Relations Director. Mr. Robert Ross is in the building. What's up, sir? Hey, good to see you. What's going on? How you doing? Doing all right. And on the phone, he is quite the actor. You may remember him from school days and do the right thing. Malcolm X, get on the bus, all, all the Spike Lee films. And now uh, he has put together a film adaptation of Frederick, Frederick Douglass. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the Ensemble 2009 Actor of the Year. Mr. Roger Smith is on the phone line. What's up, G? How you doing, man? Hey, how you doing, Jim? Hey, I no complaints. It's an honor to uh, to talk to you. I am excited that you have this one man show, Frederick Douglass, now because he is my absolute favorite figure in history. I, his autobiography, the autobiography of Frederick Douglass, is my favorite yeah. favorite book, and um, that man was just. I just I loved the way he 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 spoke and he talked and how he gave it to those white folks unapologetically killed those white folks with his tongue i love frederick Douglass, and so this is this is exciting how do you well, feel you about it some black folks too. yeah and, uh, i know i know this the folks are going to come out to the ensemble theater and get a toast a taste of uh mr uh, frederick Douglass. yes what what is it about oh, frederick, frederick Douglass now mm-hmm and what is it about uh, Frederick Douglass for you? You know, I think that in terms of the depth from which someone has come and the height that someone has achieved in America, I don't know if there's a parallel in terms of Frederick Douglass. Hmm. This was a man who didn't even know the date of his birth because there was no records kept. Mm -hmm. This was a man who was... Uh, caught trying to run away and was beaten severely and put in jail, but who didn't let it keep him down. This is a man who taught himself how to read and write, who taught countless others how to read and write uh, when it was illegal to do so. Right. Uh, this is a man who fought not only for his own liberation, but for the liberation of all of the people who were enslaved in our country, mm -hmm. and he also was able to reach out as a pioneering feminist. He attended the first women's rights convention in Seneca Falls, New York in 1848 mm -hmm. as a participating member of the congregation, and he spoke up for women's rights throughout his career until he died in 1895. So Douglas is a dynamic American genius about whom we know not enough. Mm. Uh, I think that Douglas should be on the lips of all students of American history in the same way that Abraham Lincoln and, and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson are. Absolutely. So we're trying to do our bit at Ensemble uh, Theater to, uh, to bring Douglas into the current light. Indeed. You're listening to Access Houston. We're talking to actor Roger Smith, who will be at the ensemble as their host, their annual uh, Heart of the Theater performance. Uh, Roger is bringing his one-man show, Frederick Douglass Now, on uh, beginning on Monday, February uh, the 11th, 6 p.m. at the Ensemble Theater. Um, Oh man, I'm just—I don't even know what to say. I'm so—I'm so excited because it's Frederick Douglass, um, yeah, we're excited. Robert. Yeah, tell us about yeah. this series that well, uh, you are the, uh, the heart, heart of the, of the theater. theater is an event that we do annually, um, and you know, as a as the premier African American performing arts institution for the city of Houston, you know, we're constantly out um, sharing with people, um, you know, the programming that we have to offer and inviting people to support and asking people to donate and to buy tickets and to buy subscriptions. And, you know, we get, you know, we're, so we're busy all the time and this is an opportunity for us to just stop and say, thank you. Mm. Our annual heart of the theater is recognizing 
that all of our supporters really are the heart of our operation. Our volunteers, um, all of our supporters, um, you know, we're, we're just taking this opportunity to express our appreciation for uh, all that they give the ensemble theater so that we can sustain um, um, as, an, as an arts organization. Mm -hmm. And it has presented an opportunity for us to do a lot of great things uh, in terms of offering a special performance that's not part of the regular season. And we have an opportunity to partner with great artists like uh, Mr. Roger Gambier smith uh, bringing his one-man show to Houston. We've had uh, several other artists who've come through. We had Robert Townsend come through a couple of years ago. We had actress Kim Cole come through. Mm. Um, you know, we've had a whole line of wonderful, wonderful artists come through and present some amazing works, especially for, uh, you know, our ensemble supporters and allowing us to just say thank you. Yeah. Definitely save the date for uh, Monday, February 11th, 6 p.m. at the Ensemble Theater. Uh, Mr. Roger Genevere Smith will be doing his one man show of Frederick Douglass now. And um, this is a monologue that you've been performing for quite some times, yes? I have been, and I've been doing it differently every time. Uh, you know, the show that you see now is certainly not the show that I was doing 10 years ago. Um, Douglas left us an amazing amount of written uh, material, of recorded uh, material through his speeches, his editorials, his letters. Mm -hmm. And I have been pulling through that material uh, since I was an undergraduate student. Uh, if you're aware of Mr. Hal Holbrook, who's been doing a one-man show on Mark Twain since the 1950s and continues to do it um, in a certain way, uh, Frederick Douglass is my uh, Mark Twain. Mm. I love that. I love that. I, I think I read um, an interview uh, that you had given about the show and you said when yes. you started it in undergrad, it was a really lengthy piece, and your mother told you you needed <laughs> <Yes>. to cut it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And then my mom said, you got to edit time. You know, if your mom is telling you you need to get off stage, you need to get off stage. So if that's really been the process all of these years. So you can edit it down to the, uh, to the, to the real fine tuning, you know, that we aspire to uh, when we... Uh, try to find the musicality in a dramatic piece, you know, in the same way that the great uh, musical artists do. I've always been inspired by the great musicians, particularly the jazz musicians. Oh, yeah. Went to hear Branford Marsalis uh, the other night and his quartet. Mm -hmm. And it was really a, a workshop in uh, improvisation, in suits, and in storytelling. Nice. Well, sir, I cannot wait to see this incredible performance on Monday, February the 11th at the Ensemble Theater. Uh, Roger Jenver Smith, who will be doing his one-man show, Frederick Douglass, now save the day. For all of the information, just go to EnsembleHouston.com. Uh, sir, I know that you are over at Sundance, and uh, we don't want to yes. keep you any longer than uh, what we have. So thank you uh, for your time. And uh, safe travels, and we'll and we'll see you here in H Town. We'll see you very soon. Uh, this is the Frederick Douglass bicentennial. Uh, he entered this world in 1818, and we're going to keep the party going uh, well into 2019. So 1619, 2019. Wow! Do the math, y'all. Wow! Unbelievable. Thank you, sir. And Robert, thank, thank you, you so much for letting us know about this and and, and uh, being of assistance, man. I thank appreciate you, man. it. Thank you for having us. And thank you for listening to Access Houston. We'll be back with more Access Houston on 97.9 The Box.